Hello everyone, Crystal Fisher here. Welcome to another part of this wonderful game. This is Enter the Dragonfly. Joining me today is my good pal, my good friend, my good... Da, 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 da. My good person. It's Johnny Natrium, everyone. Welcome, Johnny. Hello. While I'd love to make you... So well, glad to be. While, while, I'd love to, while I'd love to hear you speak, we've got just a few quick things to do, and that is just to talk to this Mr. Farmer over here. Mm. Let's do that. Howdy, Spyro. Space Rip Talks have arrived from nowhere and have overrun the farm looking for dragonflies. Since they haven't been able to find any, they've been abducting cows and locking them inside the big barn. <laughs> and I'm afraid I'm next. Damn. Don't worry, I'll help you. You will. Wait. Go. Oh. You just need to go around and unlock the big red barn. Will you? Now let me get. I'm gonna say, were you asking if Spyro actually speaks? No, I was. Oh, hmm. Because I, I, he does, I, by the way. He actually. Now speaks. you're making me wonder about that. Okay, so that's interesting. Yeah. But I was, I was wondering, are that do they like herd those things? Do they herd these dragonflies? Um. Like as farmers or something? Because he's saying. There's aliens coming. This is obviously like some kind of farm, sort of maybe southern-ish farm setting where yeah, like... That, yeah, I see that. Yeah. Which is like the whole, in the 50s, you know, in the, in the, in the southern parts and southern suburbs, that's where all the uh, alien sightings were. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, like the kind of the Roswell type thing, I guess, what you're talking about. I guess. Yeah, and, and where like cows were being abducted yeah, rather yeah, than it. dragonflies. Yeah. Well, um, so basically, yeah, in case you didn't know, so the dragonflies, they're the ones, they're the things you have to capture. They're like the orbs, of course. Um, there you go, there's Akira. So yeah, so with this, what what they're obviously doing, because Ripto is take, like basically yeah. spread them out, where, you know, we're trying to capture them. And in this level, yeah, the space for Riptox, they're trying to... I don't know. I don't know. They're trying to capture them. Yeah, because I'm, I'm. What's it called? It's uh, Bianca that leaves the curse that allows them to like escape. So we've got to get them before the others get them. You know. Um, so yeah, no. But I know what you mean. That's actually a good point with the whole like yeah like alien thing. Like um, the alien thing itself is. What's that shit under the house though? Is is it like a pile of of uh, dung or something that that's making that <laughs> gas gaseous? Yeah, it, it, the gaseous mist. Uh, Let's just say that, you know, my flatulence has en entered the game's, you know, sphere. Wow. Um, no, okay. just kidding. Just, that's, that's, that's terrible. That's, that's how far it stretches. That, that, that's how far, no. <laughs> God damn, that, why the fuck would, okay. Um, but no, no, what I was going to say was this, the, the whole, like, aliens in Spyro thing isn't, isn't a new concept. Now, most people view this level as being a cross between Metropolis with the whole, like, uh, like futuristic enemies and it's very much like metropolis uh they have those futuristic enemies like they have those you know futuristic cows and then also country speedway which is a quite a forgotten environment but it's like a beautiful country kind of environment. speedway do, 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 do. <laughs> exactly that that's a, that's exactly what i was going to sing before you you sung it so i have to that's you. uh that's country boy i think country boy. yeah you got your head in LA, but you're something's in Tennessee. Yep. <laughs> this level, this level is set in Tennessee. No. Um, well, there you go. No, but no, no, no. I, I know what you mean with the, uh, the kind of the country thing, as you were saying before, and the, and I know what you mean with those singing references because you can't. Have it's a, a great. Uh, uh, ca Fuck. What was he called again? Something Campbell song. Yeah. Oh What's yeah, I know, I know who you're talking about with the Campbell, but I don't know his first name. Um, Rhinestone Cowboy was his stuff. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I can say I've heard of it, but don't. Glenn, it. Glenn Campbell. Yeah, okay, yeah, there we go. Got it. But um, so you know, I, like, there's something. This I do, I do like Crop Circle Country actually. Like, if I if I, if I had to ask, if you had to ask me whether I did like it or not, um, yeah, I do. I, I like that. That kind of well, thing. Ma do you do you perhaps like it for the same reasons that you like this really weird platformer with like photorealistic textures uh, where you play I think you play as a dog or something oh uh, you talking uh, about dogs a dog's life I mean, dog's yeah life. I think I think that's probably the one yeah on the, on the and PlayStation you're on a barn 2. as well 
Yeah, it, it really reminds me of, of that because now, this one has much more of that bland sort of look with like the more realistic grass, to, the less vibrant textures and colors and lighting and everything. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, firstly, uh, do you know much about Dog's Life or have I just told no, you about well, it? I, I know, I know whatever you told me about it and whatever this weird 14 year old kid said in uh, that video that that uh, I watched as we were talking about it. That's right, yeah. Which okay. wasn't very much. Yeah, of course. Um, no, no, Dog's Life is really awesome. I, I'd say Dog's Life has better graphics than this. Like, um, I will say that because we are using a dolphin emulator and I've got the textures on a, on a higher kind of setting than the normal resolution I've got on 1.5 well, uh, yeah. I guess it, it depends the game on looks what you worse than this it does depends on on what you view as better or worse graphics no, like I mean, it, it might look it, it looks a bit more realistic in dog's life but I, I kind of like the more surreal kind of stuff you know no, inspired so like no, I, that's what you mean. this one has like these weird green fog effects and at least it's got like these these weird weirdly colored bubbles even though technically it doesn't look as good as uh, dog life perhaps no, but no. aesthetically maybe yeah no no i can i can get what you, i can get what you're saying um, okay it's really fucking awkward give me one sec i was gonna hit that thing now yeah so you uh you would like to know you haven't seen this because i haven't uploaded any of uh, the paths yet but uh you see yeah. we've got electric breath right now which is a well, breath that we can use now it's gonna give how it far does it go just as far as the flame? Yeah, pretty much just like the flame. Now, there's this guy here has something interesting to say. I don't know what he... Actually, maybe he's probably... Not. Yeah, let's have a look. Hey, Why is he hopping? I haven't seen any of your cows, but if I do... I won't do anything to rescue him. Now, uh, the music. Oh. The, hey, oh. no, so the music, uh, by the way, is done by Stuart Copeland. Just to, in case you didn't know, uh, I know you would have known that, but um, yeah. So Copeland does, does the soundtrack to this, and it's. I actually really like this music. It's got a really, really creepy vibe, like kind of like an like. I guess it's kind of out of Copeland's comfort zone, if you know what I mean. Like you know how he does those like those great tracks in Spyro One to Three, but this one kind of feels different, but while still maintaining that Copeland style. Do you get? Well, that's what I'm very. Saying? Well, I think I get where you're coming from, but I I can't say I. I know exactly what you mean because I have no idea what the music to this game sounds like at yeah, all. I've never I've played any of this. I don't blame you, but that, that, that's kind of why I got you in. Before everyone complained, oh, Johnny's not a Tooth Borrow fan. You know, I've got Johnny <laughs> in because I want I want to see his impressions of this because I could guarantee, yeah, he's never properly Well, and the fact game. that I'm uh, that I'm around right now, we just recorded like for, well, we spend f how long? Like, oh, maybe I'd say at eight? least five hours. At least. Yeah, at least, at least five hours trying to record some stuff for uh, Al Malloy and, um, or the AFH. And uh, and uh, he's got to go now, so uh, we might as well keep up our streak of recording. Yeah, then and, we got to uh, keep up a streak. I'll let you know, guys. It is 4:04 a.m. Blaze it, as they say. Yeah, um, this is the. Ah, too bad it's not 4:20 a.m. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. yeah. Well, when it gets but, to 4:20, uh, I will publicly announce it. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, I will publicly light up a joint. Yeah, because <laughs> that's what we do. I, I'm not a drug user, but I have currently had a. A, almost a bottle of. Water. But I mean, come on! You need so. to uh, you need to adhere to the 420 rule. You know? Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, I, I I will break my no drug policy just just for this let's play. That's that's what we'll do. Um, yeah. I'll go get a dealer now. I'll call him up in the next ten minutes. Um, no, but you know you know like I can actually appreciate the kind of the textures of this level. And like I know what you mean. Like and some of it looks kind of like yeah like realistic and it kind of sacrifices its its charm i guess because it's trying to look too realistic but like for example this shit in here looks shit but like for example those chickens look really nice the enemies look awesome it feels a bit barren in a way like yeah like uh, yeah you know what i mean like it feels like there's a lot of empty completely flat surface here as well like i don't know uh, it's like it, it it feels like the playstation one spirals felt more decorated or something in a weird way. No, no, that's not that's not weird. That's totally that's totally right. I'm glad that you can I'm glad that you can make that connection. 
Do you know what I mean? Despite not playing the game before, like you can actually see what made the original Spyro games so, you know, fantastic. Like the kind of environments, like, yeah, this one does feel so much more plain in comparison. I think where they make up for it a little bit more is uh, just in some of its, like, some of its extra challenges. Like there, for example, there's these awesome slides in later levels that we're going to see. These like, like where you slide down the, kind of like, you know, like they do in Harry Potter and, um, uh, Monsters Inc and all that like it and it looks awesome like it looks really cool um, Those slides are really cool. There's some mini games. I think we actually get a I think What's we get that? To... What's that? Wasn't there a Spyro game on the PlayStation 3 by the way that was I think that was Dawn of the Dragon That was the only one that was on the PlayStation 3 and I hate it I saw one of its existence <laughs> Because there was this girl like commenting on my on my uh, let's play that I was doing with Rob. Yeah, plug plug for Johnny Nature's yeah, channel. Fuck yeah, Rob. But uh, uh, <laughs> and uh, she she said like you know oh I've been waiting for a decent let's play of this game. Uh, glad to finally come across. So so that's like the good thing you know like even though the market is saturated, other people have already played the game. But at least there's some people people who appreciate maybe a higher level. Yeah, you know because like, I mean we through. we are. Undoubtedly, the greatest the let's play, greatest commentators, yeah, of course, yeah. of all time. No, you know, no, no, no. It sounds arrogant, but there is a, there is an actual, there's a, there's a quality I just, that you can yeah, expect I, from us. Like, I just, <laughs> I just wanted to mention that, you know, as well. But even though that was completely besides the point, which was that I took a look at her channel, um, and she had like this Spyro. She was Australian as well, by the way. Okay, so, okay. I, I really couldn't imagine her not knowing your Let's Plays because apparently she watches Let's Plays and she even did a Spyro Let's Play, which was of a PlayStation 3 Spyro. Interesting. And okay. it's sort of, the graphics were quite nice. Yeah, but... no, oh, that, that's a different like discussion entirely. Yeah. Like, I know what you mean. Like, yeah, obviously those games look amazing, but they don't look like it Spyro. It had very weird combat. Oh, the combat shit. That's what it, that's what I hate about it. Is because it's yeah, like it this felt kind very. Of mini gamey in a way like well not mini game but like uh, it felt weirdly quick timey because you had the uh, i can i can vaguely remember like seeing buttons pop pop up on the screen and having to press them or something oh, no, in time don't, don't don't get me started about like those kind of those spyro games like they they they're not spyro you know not not at the same level that um yeah. not at the same level that the other game is not spyro what's it called that bloody game um, Skylanders, but like they're not, yeah, it's not the same thing. Like, see, with this game, I can recognize that the developers looked at this and, and went, okay, we want to make a Spyro game like the old ones because it was the, the, the proper first one, you know, that was you right. Know, but this was still, what, what year was this? This was, I think, this was 2002. So, right, well, that that, that was still, that was basically the golden age of uh, of second generation platformers so you know with Ratchet and Clank, Jack and Daxter, uh, Sly Cooper just just came out I think then mm -hmm. um, you were very so right. um, uh, so I think there were more developers developers around then who wanted to you know do do it well rather than make a you know, a cheap Hollywood spectacle for the masses, or a cheap, you know, hand-holding ch children's game where all you have to do is, you know, do exactly as they tell you, or something like in Skylanders, which is like an, a kind of an on-rails thing with no real, I don't know. Of no course, real. It is. it's a fucking load of horseshit. Um, just sorry about that. Oh, I by the way. I, I just had to say, I, you just reminded me of something because I, I went on Slidespin like recently. Oh, Slidespin, yeah, um, check out that. <laughs> oh, yeah, good plug. Uh, but um, uh, you were, I, I was like uh, sort of checking up to see like if anything was going on there and thinking, oh, I should probably add something to that myself. But I read like this article that you made like a couple of months ago. Um, about, about Skylanders? Yeah, when you just started playing it, and you said like, "Oh well, I've had a uh, very good experience with it yeah, so far." Yeah. Don't but... rub it in, bastard! I tell you, you <laughs> you've, I, I know. Like, 
You know, with this game, it's they're two different types. This game, the reason why I prefer this to Skyland is despite it being in almost every way technically inferior in terms of like a lot of points, is that like the Skyland just feels like they're handholding you the entire way, and not like not like a kids game handhold, like a legitimately like. I cannot play this game without you 100% telling me what to do fight every right. second of the of the time which is not which is not because they want to help you out it's just because they don't want to program anything else in the like they, they just want to skill. yeah well they want to they want to make sure that you do exactly what they tell you to do because that means that they know exactly what to program they, they won't have to account for any weird glitches or stuff like that or, or exploits or like people actually trying to explore the level anything, themselves yeah, you can't do anything like in this game I like the fact that you can actually we can go around and just do random stuff and we can, yeah, you know, yeah like there seems you know, to be it seems to be a fair and amount you're of actually, freedom no, you, you're, you're gonna like this in a minute actually you're gonna like this uh, firstly this level is like a revolving door uh, you get to go back to the starter level, but I, I, what you're going to see in, in the couple next couple parts within this level, uh, let me just talk to this guy first, and then we'll, we'll talk about it. Hey, Spyro, glad you're here. The doors are jammed. I set some explosives, but don't have any matches. My mama always told me that I should never play with matches. Anyway, maybe you can help me with the light. All right, what does he want me to do? Flame him? Oh god, we're flame. Mm. We're fucking. We're just. Oh my god. Oh my god. We're, we're terrorists. We just opened the door. <laughs> and there go the cows. There go the cows. Alright, now oh we'll talk to this guy once more. He's gonna give us our, our lovely dragonfly. Hey there, dragon. Thanks for helping out this here farm. Thank you. Anytime, farmer Bill. I love the fact Tom Kenny does an incredible voice acting in this. Like he's talking, you know, he goes this, he goes, "Hey, it's Fiona." He does every single dragonfly he does a voice for. Like he goes, you know, he said he actually says. Oh, he's pretty, the Spyro. He's yeah, Spyro. Yeah. What? Okay. What the hell? I have no idea what that was about. But what? He just he just kept going. What? 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 Who is this? Stone Cold Steve Austin? Um. Okay, so now now that we're we're not done with this level, but we're gonna have to split off to do another little challenge now. Um, I kind of like this now. This is much. Uh, the streaming now is much better than with L. I actually feel like the the I've got this full screen now. It it, it actually looks like full quality now. Oh, awesome. So that's, well, that's good. I'm glad. I'm I'm not playing I, it on. I a very feel big like I'm actually so. watching. Now, now, here's some nice continuity. Uh, the fact that, like, you actually, the, all the cows go back to where they were. So, like, you actually get to explore now. And the there's continuity with the cows. in the fact that they are sitting in in a pile of their own uh, gaseous fumes. Yeah, yeah. So, it means that it was indeed there. <laughs> exactly. And, um... Let's see, what is it? Thanks for feed freeing the cows. You think you can go get them and move them back here? Oh, okay. Well, you know, it's funny. We were, we were recording a Zephyr part, um, and, you know, they are... Yeah. All right, so... What are we... Now, where do we got to... Where do we got to actually herd them? Because it says, it says we just got to... Okay, so I guess we got to just herd them close to him. I get, I get... Well, this is kind of... Hmm. That's... Because they're like... There's no obstacles to move them over. No, no. You it, just have to guide them it's very like much like it's very much just a rip off of the old challenge without the challenge really um but you know yeah, what? yeah and the fun of going like through this whole environment and shooting them across gaps and everything i do like inside. the fact though if there's one thing i can gain from it i do like the fact that it's not obvious that there's a challenge it's like you actually have to go back to have a look you, it doesn't tell you. It doesn't tell you. Oh yeah, by the way, here's what you have to do. You have to go back here and do that. You know, like you know how I'm, right. I remember how you don't like the whole hand holding concept of like them right. just telling you everything. I like the fact that you actually get. Yeah, to but I'd still be, I'd still be like kind of, you know. Oh yeah, I'd rather a challenge. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, like if you go and explore, the fun thing is when when you actually find something that's like inventive there rather than. Just three cows in a circle and guiding them to the middle of the circle. Yeah, something. no, that, it isn't as good. Let's let's be honest. But I just think, okay, here we go. Let's see, is that is that it? 
Oh, fuck, it's shit. Oh, crap, they're, they're moving away. I'm actually gonna look up the soundtrack to this level and just put it on, like, sort of quietly in the background. Okay, so yeah, that I can. That. Now, but you're, there's actually one what great thing atmosphere? about this game. One great thing about this game is how every level has at least more than one track. For example, there's like a track for... Oh, okay. There's actually a track for this game, um, for the, the UFO challenge that we're about to do as well. So anyway, let's see if this, let's see if he will actually give us something now. Come on. Wait, so what's this one called? I don't know if I should it's actually be crop watching Crop Circle you. Country. Crop, crop Circle Country. Why oh, do I know? Go. Why do I feel like I've heard that before? You probably have. They get this Cedric. There's Cedric. Whatever is. What a lovely, what a lovely dragonfly. He's blue. Anyway, so now I reckon that's the end of this part. And in the next part, we're going to be doing uh, another one of those challenges that you're going to see, which is I think is really fun. Oh, um, this sounds very like just about like post 2000 or something, sort of electronic with like. This weird synthesizer effects or something with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get, I get what you mean. I like it. I like it, Mr. Natrium. I like it a lot. Yeah, same. No, I'm glad you, yeah. It is, it is a good soundtrack. And, and in terms of the atmosphere of the level, it does exactly that. Like, it, I feel like it's done its job. Do you know what I mean? Like, in, you know, um, in, that, in that regard. Now, let's... Are those Hans Zimmer guitars? Ah, uh, yes, like, he does use how he does. Yes, yes, he does. I think that's a Hans Zimmer sitar, actually, even. What he... Yep, he what does do use Hans Zimmer guitars. I have used Hans Zimmer guitars once before as well. I use them in my uh, Lion King esque uh, song that I made for a. Oh, uh, nice. For yeah, a record label list. that you're getting paid millions to do. No. <laughs> yep. Uh -uh. I'm, uh, other record labels, uh, are, uh, are <laughs> available to contact pu me. Publishers are interested, Hopefully. let's just say that. Yeah. Um, okay, so now, alright, here we go. Now, the climbing, hey, look, at least the climbing's faster than Spyro 2, I'll give them that. Anyway, so here's the end of the level, well, the end of the line for us. In the next part, we're going to be visiting, we're going to be finishing off this level, doing the remaining two. I'm going to have another glass of wine and then we're going to get uh -oh. back into it uh oh be careful be careful thank you for watching and, th and make sure you check out mr johnny natrium's let's plays as i am in them and so is rob uh mr mr <laughs> rob smith mr rob Who smith a guy that i've loves. never had in commentary before yet i'm plugging because he's an awesome bloke